Okay, Algebra 2, Lesson 7.7, 7, uh, we're going to solve equations where actually the power is written as a fractional exponent. So we have W to the one-third equals 4. Just want to remind you that's really the cube root of W is equal to 4. At this point, you're going to notice that we're doing what we did yesterday. So that's kind of nice. Uh, how do we get rid of a cube root? What do we have to do to both sides? Raise it to what power? To the third. Now, I'll leave it to you very quickly to see that 4 raised to the third power is 64. We just want to go through this quickly. But we should, of course, have a check. Now, the check would mean that when I take 64, and I'm going to put that in parentheses, I'm checking that original problem here. God bless you. And we're trying to see if this is really legitimate, if this truly works out. So I'm going to go 64. I want to raise that up to the one-third power. And uh, we should get a 4. We do. And that's our answer. So that's more or less how this lesson starts. Is it new stuff? Well, to a degree, but in all honesty, it's really uh, what we were doing yesterday. So, look, W to a one-third power, it's the denominator, guys. It's always the denominator that tells you what kind of a root you have. Raised to the one-third, you're going to have a third root. And then, of course, we can say, well, now I want to raise both sides to the third power. And negative 5 to the third power uh, is, of course, going to get you up to negative 125. You can see that real quickly. You could say, well, are we done? <clears throat> well, we should do a check. The check is just going to say, hey, if I put in negative 125 in parentheses, would that really equal negative 5? So notice how much we're relying on our calculator to help us out, especially for this check. Uh, undoubtedly, sooner or later, you're going to get a no solution. And we're going to check this out. This works. This works, guys. So please understand that negatives are allowed inside of cube roots. Uh, that's what we were talking about yesterday. Now, as we look at letter C, this is really the fourth root of W is equal to 3. It's the fourth root. How do we know that? Well, your denominator down here, that 4, tells you what type of a root we really have. So how do I get rid of a fourth root? We have to raise to what power? The fourth power, right? And three to the fourth, for the sake of time, let's, you know, just, we could type it into the calculator in a heartbeat. We're going to get 81, right? Well, again, I think you guys get the, the idea. You do need to do a check. So I'm going to say parentheses 81. Raise that up and see if when we get the one-fourth power, if that really is going to work out, uh, you know, 81 to the one-fourth power, we did get that to equal 3. It works. It's good. One last one of this sort. Uh, you can see that once again, we'd have a fourth root. Here's the fourth root of W. And, uh, you know, I'm going to raise both sides to the fourth power. Notice I'm putting parentheses around the negative 2, because uh, it's uh, not just the 2 that's raised to the 4th, the negative gets raised up there as well. So as we get that, negative 2 to the 4th, you would get 16. And right here, this might be the first time where you'd say, hey, we're in trouble when we have our check. You see, as, as we check that, we'll have 16. Going to bump that up to the one fourth power. Is that going to equal negative two? Well, let's see. We'll have 16. 
raise that up and uh, we're already hearing no uh, it, it's not you know 16 to the 1 fourth is actually a 2 guys 2 is not equal to negative 2 so what's our answer no solution right it's going to be no solution uh, so that's really what we're going to be working with okay the next part of the lesson is venturing off into some very different notation um, and some very different types of problems here is f of x is equal to 4x squared remember that's like saying y is equal to 4x squared but you know f is is just another way to write that and then we have g uh, g is of course this x plus 1 and uh, very simply what they're going to ask us to do is to write an expression for g plus f of x so that's like g of x plus f of x that's really what they're saying that's saying x plus 1 is going to get added to a 4x squared guys there are no like terms you don't have to reorder the problem. You could leave it as x plus 1 plus 4x squared, but you're done. You're done. You're just following the directions here. We're, we're told that we need to add the two functions together. Uh, take a look right here in letter B. We have multiplication. This, of course, means g of x would get multiplied to f of x. Well, what is g of x? Well, it's x plus 1. What about f of x? Well, you could put parentheses around this if you'd like. You'd have 4x squared. But here we do want to distribute. 4x squared times x is 4x to the third. 4x squared times 1 is just a 4x squared. And you're done. And that's it. Guys, as we look at letter C, this is going to be quite different. And I can tell you immediately, if you're really paying attention here, you're going to see that everything prior to what we were doing, everything that we were doing before, it was G plus F of X and G times F of X. Here we're saying subtract, but we're saying G minus F of 2. So what we're really going to do, order matters, is we're going to say g of 2 minus f of 2. And what you're really saying is x is now specifically the value of 2. So look, we're going to try to figure this out uh, real quickly. Uh, you know, with x equal to 2, you might remember at the start of the year, way back in august in fact we talked about storing a value in for x we could hit two the store buttons right by the one and then we hit an x and the wonderful thing is now the calculator remembers whenever i type in x it really is thinking of the number two how is that going to help us well what is g of two g is x plus 1 so watch this i'm just going to type x plus 1 and when you do that you just get 3. now of course you could have just come up here and said g of 2 isn't that really 2 plus 1 and that's equal to 3. yeah you could have done it that way <laughs> But you also could, of course, use the calculator just like this. Now, f of 2. Well, we've already stored uh, x is equal to 2. You can see f is 4x squared. So here's the real cool thing. If I just type in 4x squared, I'm going to get 16. Just like that. Now, we'll do 3 minus 16 and we'll get negative 13. Of course, we could also have plugged in f by n. Okay, so on the back, we're going to have something very, very, very similar. We're going to have, uh, for number three, for part A, 
they're going to say, hey, could you find f divided by g of 2? And of course, what that's really saying, guys, is find f of 2 divide by g of 2. Here's the really cool thing. You already have your x value of 2 taken care of. You can say, well, what is f of 2? Some kids will say, well, wow, I, I just want to plug in right in here that your x value is 2 and I'd get 2 plus 2 is 4. You could do that, of course, but look, if f is really x plus 2 now, it's, it's a different thing from what we just did. Type in x plus 2 and you get 4. Look at g. g is parentheses x plus 1 parentheses x minus 5. And uh, you let the calculator just work that out. You'd get negative 9. So g of 2 would be negative 9. The top is 4, down below is negative 9. Really, we could just say negative 4 ninths. And of course, you could have just plugged in your 2 by hand. Some kids just want to do that. They'll say 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. You would have gotten negative 9. I think it's easier to just let the calculator punch it out for you. Okay? Part B, wow, way different. Find the values that are not in the domain of f of g of x. That means it's f of x over g of x. And f of x was x plus 2. Down below, we've got x plus 1, x minus 5. Guys, there's really just one issue with the domain. Uh, the domain would mean that you would get an error if you plug those numbers in. Like if we tried to store that in and, and try to work it out, it just wouldn't do it. Uh, so here's the problem. You can't divide by zero. Just look at the bottom. Never even worry about the top. Look at the denominator and set your denominator equal to zero. Now, when you set your denominator equal to zero, you'll have x plus 1 equals zero. x minus 5 is equal to zero. And uh, you might remember us doing that earlier. Uh, you know, when we were working on quadratics, uh, the domain, you're really saying x cannot be negative 1, x cannot be 5. You'd say negative 1 and 5 are the problems. If you were to plug them in, you would divide by 0. Just worry about the denominator. Set the denominator equal to 0, and then you solve. Last one, guys. Uh, this is known as a composition. We'll have s of negative 4 and then t on the outside. What that means is first find s of negative 4. And uh, what that means is I'm going to take negative 4 and I'm going to store it in for x. Okay, let's do that real quickly. Negative 4, <laughs> store that in for x. And then s of negative 4, it's this negative 2x minus 1. So I'm just going to type in negative 2x minus a 1. And guys, you'll get 7. You'll get 7. Now, of course, you could do this by hand. Some kids really want to. Negative 2 times negative 4, that's 8. 8 minus 1, you would have seen 7. Again, I just let the calculator take care of it. What this means, though, for a composition is what you just found right here. All this stuff in here, it's the number 7. So now we're going to say find t of 7. In yellow, that has been worked out. It's like a two-step problem. Now all you got to do is go back and plug in a 7 in for your x. So I'll go 7, store x. But now I'm plugging it into t. 
you could see t is 2x squared minus 1. So I'll just type in 2x squared.